One of the books that we're really excited about and one that Tom Hanks recommends very highly and and talked about when he was here is a book called Welcome to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast, a weekly podcast providing career and creative inspiration to help you build a purpose-filled life. If you're interested in tapping into your creative potential, pursuing a career with passion, and building on your biggest and best resource, yourself, please join me on this path. I'm your host, Nancy Moore, and I want you to know that I'm on this journey with you. So let's get started. Well, Pat, I am so happy to be visiting with you today. This is so fun, something that I've been looking forward to for a while. Thank you, Nancy. It's great to be here. This is um, really fun because I have known you since you were 17 or 18. 17. It would have been 17. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you moved to Tulsa. uh, The first time I came to Tulsa was December of 1998. And I was 17 and uh, came and looked at the university and and had met Barb Adkins at a college yes. fair before that. Yes. Um, and Barb, of course, was your boss at that time, mm-hmm. later became my boss. Yes. When, when I worked in that office. And mm-hmm. and yeah, we, we got to see Tulsa. My mom and I came down here. Uh, it was like sleeting and gross and awful at home in in eastern Iowa and it was 70 degrees here my tour guide wore shorts uh on the tour and 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 the guy that I had lunch with you know there were no coats anybody needed anything and it was just like this gorgeous beautiful day in December there were blooming flowers on campus and and it's like okay doesn't that make a difference that was at the University of Tulsa yeah you have the best memory but that's kind of stuff that sticks out in your mind Mm -hmm. because of it being so drastically different than what you had come from. Yes, yes. And I was looking at schools in Indiana and Ohio and the weather wasn't going to be any different there. It was just away and it was kind of a place, those were places that I could go and probably be the only person from my town that was there, which was kind of important to me. I wanted to go and branch out and meet new people and do new things. Yeah. um, But I also had Tulsa on my list and came down and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tulsa's lucky because now... (laughs) We're going to talk about, yeah. you know, your your journey a little bit. Right. Actually, maybe you should just go ahead and share that from from deciding to attend to yes. you. Yeah. And so so one of the things that kind of got me excited about the programs in Tulsa, I'm a big sports fan. And so um, there were kind of two pieces that, that were important. One was they had a program at that time in sports management. And it's changed and been different through the years but at that time it was one of the few programs in the college of business there were a lot of sports administration kind of programs in education schools so that you could be an athletic director or something along those lines and do coaching that was not interesting to me but i thought it'd be fun to work for a professional sports team and so that was one piece of it and then the other piece of it was that it was division one athletics and so tu had had at that time, it had before I got there had had some success in basketball. You know, Nolan Richardson, but those Tubby Smith teams that that went to the Sweet Sixteen and stuff that had happened already. And so it was a good basketball program, and had Division One football that wasn't very good at the time. And then my freshman year uh, was Bill Self's last year in Tulsa, where he took the team all the way to the lead eight, and That's you know great. that team was as good. Really, Self would even talk about it until he won the national title at Kansas. That Tulsa team was kind of, he often would say that it was as good as any team he'd ever coached. Maybe not better, but as good as any team he'd coached. And then he's won some titles. So yeah. those yes. teams are a little yes. better. But yeah. yeah. So tell me about um, after you graduated from mm-hmm. TU, mm-hmm. kind of what you went into. Yeah. Um, because it. All of that is very different than what you're currently doing. All which of that we'll is different. About. Yes, yeah. uh, I I really liked being on a college campus. I really liked working at a university. I was involved in the student government, but particularly from the like programming side of things. When I was a student, I was the um, I, I did a lot of of those kinds of things, leadership roles on campus, and and, and programming the big Spring Fest concerts and the and the other activities for events and and kind of created this opportunity you know this was 2019 I was a student 99 to 03 so in like 01 and 02 um created a program that we had to do back then because we didn't have the BOK center um and so we did like bus trips to concerts uh and I was helped part of that group that kind of 
thought of like let's do that there was no place in tulsa where you could go to a big arena show because the bok center hadn't been built yet and so we did tours to st louis or dallas and we went to professional games and stuff like that we just would get a bus and buy a bunch of tickets and students could go Mm -hmm. uh and and i really liked that but um what i really liked the most was working with prospective students and so i and so i was a university ambassador the whole time that I was a student, um, gave tours to prospective students and even worked in the admission office one summer between my junior and senior year and kind of made a decision that that's really what I'd like to do when I finished college. And so uh, the summer I graduated was the first summer and only summer in like a 10 year stretch where there wasn't an opening in the office. And so I had to wait a year to do to, to get the job and so I worked at another place in town and uh, and wound up coming back and and starting that job a year after graduating and so uh, I worked in the admission office for five years recruiting students from Kansas City Nebraska Iowa Minnesota um, you had for a little territory. while I had your territory <laughs> yeah and then for a little while I even had Northern California so I got to go out there once a year and okay. do stuff too and I had California did you uh-huh. yeah yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's really funny. Um, okay, so if we fast forward mm-hmm. to what you're currently doing, so you are. Yeah. So I'm the buyer and author program coordinator at Magic City Books. Yes. Um, I had I had left Tulsa and gone to graduate school in Philadelphia and and thought I'd stay in universities forever. I was trying to make a switch into fundraising and and development, and so um, I wound up back in Tulsa and I did that. At TU. So I worked at TU a second time for five years doing annual giving. And at the time that I was doing that, um, and I had this kind of fundraising background, and, and especially as it related to kind of small gifts, um, annual giving kinds of, th- kinds of things, letter mailings and phone-a-thon and emails and those kinds of things, um, I was able to join the board of the Tulsa, Tulsa Literary Coalition as they're getting ready to get started on this project, Magic City Books. And so um, so it had begun as a series of author programs that was, had the name Booksmart Tulsa. Some listeners may remember kind of Booksmart Tulsa being the, the big thing. Um, and, and our co-founder, Jeff Martin, would bring authors to town and do these author visits. And then uh, there was enough energy and, and drive in there and no independent bookstore in Tulsa. And so that is kind of how Magic City Books began. And and Jeff partnered with our other co-founder, Cindy Holsey, who'd been a longtime city county librarian. And the two of them were able to kind of put this together as the Tulsa Literary Coalition, as a nonprofit and the primary project being Magic City Books. Okay. So now in your current role, Mm If you'll t- kind of tell me a little yeah. bit, is there a typical day? You know, <laughs> what does a typical day look like? And then I want to hear about what you really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. So, girl. you know, there's... I kind of have two different sides of, of this job. And, they, and they, they're they they're connected, but at a lot of places it might be two different people that, that do that. At other places it would just be two parts of one person's job. So it's a little different everywhere in that independent bookstore mm-hmm. world of things. Um But on the one hand, um, I'm the buyer for the store. And so the books that we bring in, whether that is the new release that comes out on Tuesdays or the books that we've sold and need to bring in again because they're the popular books that people want to have. And so managing kind of the influx of those books um, and making sure that we have the the books that people are going to want to read Mm -hmm. on the shelf. And so that's that's the one part of the job. Um, And then the other side of it is is I'm the author program coordinator. And so all of the programs just kind of keeping the schedule going. And and we have a lot of help with that from from everybody because sometimes we do some pretty big events. I Uh, want to ask you about that. Okay, so you just had Tom Hanks, right? We did. Okay, so I want to hear about that. So that is the product of a lot of years of doing events okay Um, you know that is something you know there aren't very many places that that they're going to to do that you have to kind of have been doing programs for a little while and have had some success and know that you can get an audience and so that was sold out pretty quickly that sold out right in an hour a little over an hour maybe yeah and that was and, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that it was um that you know just the PAC was our partner on this and, and the ticketing went through their website and and 
it was a high demand thing and it just kind of took some time for all those tickets to be able to sell and, and work through the website and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we had it in the big Chapman theater that's over 2,300 seats. Wow. And, uh, and so we had a sold out show. Um, we had on, on the day of the event, uh, Tom actually got to the building early and signed all the books that the guests received that night. So, I think and I so saw as them you, on Instagram. yeah, as uh-huh. you as you came in, you scanned your ticket, and then you were handed a book, and and all those books were signed that by is Tom. So, so neat. he did that. We moved through, like you know, it's one of those fun little facts, but like two tons of books, two wow. tons of books had to get moved. They, you know, you ship them there to the building, but then once you're in the building, they had to get dispersed to every floor and, and be able to be there at those doors for everybody to be able to get as they walked in, so they could have them and. And be able to do that. And so it's an extra layer because, you know, usually the PAC, they, I mean, they might have a whole sold out Hamilton show, but it's just scanning a ticket and going mm-hmm, to get your seat. Mm-hmm. We have this extra layer of getting books in. And the only time that you can do it is to do it as you're entering the mm-hmm. building. So mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's so amazing, though, that Magic City was able to coordinate this mm-hmm. and execute such yeah. a great person right. coming to Tulsa yeah. and you yeah. know having that be and he had you know he has and sometimes this is what it takes but he has a history he wrote an op-ed in the New York Times about Greenwood and the race massacre back in 2021 when it was the centennial uh, of that I didn't realize that okay so he'd written this 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 op-ed basically saying I'm a history buff I I know about some things I know about Oklahoma I'm just finding out about this right now and and that shouldn't be the case. I shouldn't just learn about this right now. Mm-hmm. And and so just that, and, and he talked about this when, when he was during the event, you know, that we have to learn all the history. Um, you know, it, we're better for it. You know, we, we need to learn, we can handle it. We, we're, we're capable of handling all of our history and not just the quote unquote good history. Mm-hmm. And even the quote unquote good history we know here in Oklahoma, a lot of the good history that we learn is is completely ignoring the Native American experience in mm-hmm. our country. And it is not always a good history. There mm-hmm. there were people that got removed and mm-hmm. all of that. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so okay, on on the Tom Hanks deal, mm-hmm. if you're kind of helping coordinate that, did did you have any part of did you get to show him around or ask him any yeah questions so so or? everything's a little different when it comes to uh where those go so earlier in the week we had a, a novelist nana kwame ajebrenya who's written a book called chain gang all stars that is our booksellers like number one book of the year this is we are over the moon over this book it is something that is going to hopefully continue to get a lot of recognition and critical acclaim we all love it very much and so he came on thursday and for that one you know i got to pick him up from the airport i got to spend some time with him take him to his hotel and, and do all that stuff and and so sometimes that's what gets to happen and and other times authors come in they have a driver they have somebody that's there or i need to be doing other things and i don't get to spend as much time because tom was signing all those books yes i got to spend about three hours there was a group of us that were there kind of getting those books signed and and were pretty efficient at being able to kind of get that line moving and and he just has to sit there and sign his name a couple thousand times and yeah yeah i love that he yeah i love that he did that but that's neat i feel like do you feel like that's a perk of your job oh yeah there's i mean there's and you know there's this um the one that that always stands out to me. So Ambassador Samantha Power, she yeah. was in the Obama administration. She was the ambassador to the United Nations. And she was here. Her college friend was John Schumann, the former president of OU Tulsa. Um, and so John is on our board. And her and the two of them are pals, right? They, they go back to college. And and so she came. She had a book. And she came and did an event with us. and and But it was happening during the World Series. And... It was 2019, the Washington Nationals were in the World Series, and because she lives in Washington, her kids are Nationals fans. And so Rabbi Kamen was there. We did this event at the synagogue, and Rabbi Kamen's phone was being used to watch the game. So while she was on stage with John talking, they (laughs) talked, right? But when she was signing books, Game 4 of the World Series was on. And I'm next to her, and so I watched Game 4 of the World Series. But on the rabbi's phone with Samantha Power, like... And a good thing would happen for the Nats, and she'd like jump up in the air, and you know, like, yeah, she, oh, she wanted so to see cool. what was happening with that game, and um, and afterwards, like John was trying to get her to go someplace and have dinner or something. She's like, 
is your house close? Like, let's go between innings and we'll just go and get back and get back to watching this game. I want, that's what wow. I want to see. Wow. So, oh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. Okay, so there's probably a lot of things that you really enjoy about your job. Mm-hmm. So tell me what you really enjoy, and then I want to hear maybe what is not so fun. Sure. Um, it is a lot of fun to to be able to put a book in somebody's hand that they're going to love, you know, um, and, and be able to introduce somebody to something. There's a lot of people that come in and they know exactly what they want. Hey, I'm looking for this. Do you have it? And we do and, or we don't, and we order it for them or whatever it might be. And they know exactly what they want. But, you know, one of the nice things about working in an independent bookstore is that there are real readers that are there that are, that have read a lot of things and can take what you are interested in or what you want to get for, your child or your parent or your sibling or your neighbor or whoever it is that you're wanting to buy something for and be able to give you that recommendation and and know you know if you've liked this and this and this well this one's also really good and you're going to like that and, and that sort of thing and to and then to be at these events you know tom hanks is is outstanding and, and there's no denying the energy of all the of over two thousand people in that room all excited to kind of be there but that Thursday night event that we had earlier this week too, where there were not 2000 people there, but it was this great conversation between Nana and Jennifer Croft, who's a Tulsa writer and, and translator, um, and TU alumna. And, uh, and, and just this amazing conversation that the two of them had to kind of talk about books and ideas and, and all this stuff. And, and to have that community of readers get built, that's a, that's a pretty special thing. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Okay, what what is the part that you don't love? You're always so positive. I'm I, a positive person. You are. Yes, yes. I would say um, there are things that just that that are a challenge for me. It's not that you know other people might like them a, a great deal, but um, organizationally, you know, trying to kind of keep every single thing in line and, yeah. and being able to do that, and and sometimes having uh the time commitments that that kind of come with it with with my four-year-old and my one-year-old and not always having to be able to be there because a lot of our programs are at night so Mm -hmm. trying to kind of work that Mm -hmm. out where um i'm not away more than i have to be Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah. yeah. Well, when I called the store just a few weeks ago, you mm-hmm. answered. And yes. I thought, that's also a small environment, and mm-hmm. you are probably wearing a lot of hats, yeah. you know, to where it's, you're not too good to answer the phone, right. you know, even right. though you're, uh, you know, kind of a different level. So yeah. I, yeah. I liked that. Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of cool. Yes. Yeah, that is something, I mean, I enjoy that aspect of it and being able to answer that phone call and a lot of times because I'm the one that is working on the event side of thing and, and kind of knows where where those events are going to be and, and those kinds of things a lot of the questions that come to the store are questions that I'm capable of answering pretty mm-hmm. easily mm-hmm. Um, also I buy the books for the store I know what's in the store most of the time I don't know everything but I mean on, on the top of my head but there's a lot of times if you called up and, hey, do you have the new Emily Henry book? Yes. I, I mean, I don't have to look. I don't have to check. I don't have to do. I, I know we have the new Emily Henry book. You, we, we've got that one for you. Yes, you can. Yeah, I'll put it on hold for you. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about maybe some suggestions for books for mm-hmm. people that are popular right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, one not. of the books that, um, that I really loved Last year uh, was a book by an author named Hernan Diaz, and the book is called Trust, and it just won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, I I was trying to think if I'd ever if I'd ever read a book that went on to win the Pulitzer Prize. I've read plenty of past winners, books mm-hmm. after they'd won, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure that I'd read one before that I read and loved before it won that big prize. And and that one, uh, you know, not every single Pulitzer Prize winner stands the test of time a lot of i mean some of them from a long time ago they're hard to get your hands on now and and they don't always last forever but uh but often that's a pretty good indicator of a book that's going to stick around for a while um his diaz's first book is called in the distance and that's another one that i really love um and it's kind of a in a way a reverse western so it's this swedish immigrant who winds up split up from his brother his brother goes to New York and he goes to San Francisco and he's trying to get back across the country west to east. And so, so many of these, you know, 19th century Western stories are 
traveling west, you know, from mm-hmm. the East Coast on somewhere, you know, eventually maybe ending in California or Oregon or someplace. And he's on his way west. And, and it's just a really well-written, beautiful book. Um, so, so Hernan Diaz is one that I certainly really like. Um, and I already mentioned Nana Kwame. His book, Chain Gang All-Stars, is the one that, you know, as a bookseller staff, we can't get enough of wow. this year. Um, but, you know, there's also... One of the books that we're really excited about and one that Tom Hanks recommends very highly and, and talked about when he was here is a book called The Book of Charlie. And this is a book written by a journalist who is from Kansas City and moved back to Kansas City and uh, met his neighbor across the street as his neighbor is out washing his car, which is how you meet your neighbor. Sometimes you move into a new house. It just so happens that this neighbor was 102 years old when he was out there washing that car. And he lived for another seven years, wound up as 109. And so this is a book of David and, and his neighbor, Charlie. Um, so David Vandrelli was, is the author, and the book is called The Book of Charlie and, and uh, Lessons from This 109-Year-Old Neighbor and Friend. And so um, something that's really definitely a good fit for Father's Day yeah. and, and, uh, and, and kind of any time really but um you know kind of those those life lessons from a older generation okay yeah. oh my gosh yeah that's a good one mm-hmm. um now what about for kids yes like i said i have a four-year-old and a one-year-old my four-year-old eddie uh is really into animals and so we read a ton of animal books and and he loves big cats and so lots of books about big cats and and one of the great things um is that there's just there's a lot of really great fact and and illustration books that are out there. National Geographic does a really amazing job, of course, with this. And and that's one of the nice things is that, you know, there are, when it comes to children's books, sometimes really falling back on brands that you trust. I mean, the Na- National Geographic, you can trust that that's going to be well done, that mm-hmm. the facts are going to be facts, that mm-hmm. the pictures are going to be, you know, mm-hmm. well done and, and all that. Um, and then there's also, you know, special illustrated books that that have great art and and um paintings and and pictures and drawings of animals or whatever it might be that the kids are into and so there's some really cool nonfiction stuff like that for kids another one we're just kind of at a stage where we can sit down for a little bit longer and be able to read slightly longer books and so the bad guys series is one that we really really like uh there was a movie made of it last summer, and so some people may be familiar with that movie, um, but there's a whole series of books, I think we're up to 16 now, um, where the historical bad guys, the big bad wolf, a snake, a barracuda, a shark, um, they are all trying to re-image themselves as good guys, and, and particularly Wolf. He's kind of the leader, and he wants to be seen as a good guy and not a bad guy, and, and they're fighting against cute animals uh in the in the in the series and so they're just they're a lot of fun um and they're like a lot of the best children's literature it is stuff that the kids are going to enjoy and the parents are going to enjoy as well and that and it's not just fun for the kids it's not and it's not just fun for the adults and the kids don't like it either it's it's fun for everybody i like that okay so as a buyer, mm-hmm. you only have so much shelf space yes. at Magic City. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you kind of look at when you're looking to bring in books mm-hmm. and you know take take up that shelf space? Right. Well, it's hard, and that's a, that's a that's one of the big challenges. And we have to kind of continue to move through. One of the things that was true. The store opened in 2017 and I and I came on in the position in March of 2018. So we'd only been open for four or five months when I started. But our section for young readers, so independent readers, chapter books, um, for those people, we just had kind of one section and all of them were put in together. So you had, for, for from the most kind of famous things, Rick Riordan and the, and the Percy Jackson series or the Harry Potter series, um, classics, Roald Dahl classics and, and those things and everything else that, that fits in that. But also we had Dave Pilkey and the graphic novels in there. So Dogman and Captain Underpants and, and Jeff Kinney and the Wimpy Kid books. And they were all in the same section. And so what you have is, is that you have some readers that like those graphic novels. I really like Dogman. Do you have something else? Like, you know, I read it in 20 minutes because that's how fast it was. And I've read it four, and my kids read it four times, but we need to get on to another thing now and we got to wait six months for the next Dogman book to come out. 
what do you recommend? And so it was hard because we didn't have those graphic novels for that reader, for those readers kind of all in one place. And so we were able to put those kind of reshelve things and get those all into one place. And so now you can go there. Yes, I've read the Dog Mans. Yes, I've read the Wimpy Kids. Now I'm going to get into whatever the next thing is, whether it's Investigators or the book that I uh, was just kind of taking a look at this morning, The First Cat in Space Ate Pizza. It's a it's a new one. Um, it's, it's either going to be the first in a series or it's a standalone, but I mean, there isn't anything else, but it's uh, it's just a fun book. Mac Barnett, who's written, written a lot of books for readers kind of of all ages, picture books on up. Um, He's the author of the book, and the illustrator is his high school friend. They were best friends. They want their yearbook, like they are best, like superlative wow. best friends. The best friends of the two people in this class, and uh, and so they've the other one, you know, did Chris Harris. Uh, he did the pictures, and Mac did the words, and um, and they get to do this project together. You know, twenty years after they graduated high school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. That's really cool. Okay, so you guys have some neat events that mm-hmm. you do from time to time. And I don't know if you have your hand in that or not, but yeah. recently I was seeing, is it uh, spend the night, mm-hmm. like a camp out yeah. even yeah. there. And so if you want to share a little bit about maybe things that you have this summer mm-hmm. going on, or even just the website so people can right. check it out, because you, you guys probably have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so we did a slumber party. We call it the the Magic City Book Slumber Party. And we've we've done this a few times now, always on the night before Independent Bookstore Day. So Independent Bookstore Day has been going on for 10 years now. And and so we've done not every single year, but a number of years, we've had a sleepover in the store the night before. And so folks can can camp out and, and spend the night in the bookstore. And it's a lot of fun for folks to do it with with the young kids i have not yet had my turn spending the night in the bookstore i know that day is coming but uh (laughs) so far i have not i've not been the one that did that um and you know in the summer we do uh we we are still kind of finalizing what we're going to be doing on summer reading stuff but we have a summer reading program um to to get folks going and reading and and partner with other organizations kind of around the city and that's one of the other nice things that we have as an independent bookstore and 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 this kind of known entity to be able to help out with other organizations is that we're there for events that Tulsa City County Library puts on, events that TU puts on, Tulsa Town Hall, we're the bookseller always, and so um, and so we're able to be there and offer books as as a as a for the featured speakers and, and things like that that are going on. So. Um, there's there's a number of those things that are going on. We do we try and have book events for readers of all ages. We do a lot with with adult books and, and adult titles, but we do have picture book events. Earlier this spring, we had Joy Harjo. She has a new a new picture book that's out this year of one of her poems called Remember um, that was illustrated beautifully, and so we did an event with that. We have guests visitor visiting authors that come through, and and we we're able to do that either either with school visits or just for in you know. Uh, standalone events in store or, or off-site. So we've got a lot of that fun stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, back to you and the mm-hmm. kids and your mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you guys enjoy reading, mm-hmm. um, of course. You have to, you, you have know, to. be reading yeah. to your kids. Yeah. Uh, so what else do you guys, when you have that time away and off time with your family, what do you enjoy mm-hmm. doing yeah. together? Well, my wife's family is all musicians, and so there's always a lot of music going on. And uh, and and her dad and brother are both professional piano players, Donald Ryan and Baron Ryan, and and so we have a lot of music always happening and going to to music things as well. We just bought a house, and so we've got a lot of house stuff that we have going on in our in our world as well. And so we're we're doing all that, and and so. Uh, getting new furniture and getting new stuff that fits into this house and be yeah. this place for us and yard stuff. So that keeps you busy with yes. two young ones. Yes. Yeah. That keeps you busy. It does. Yeah. It does. Okay. So then in wrapping up mm-hmm. my theme for my podcast is live purposefully in 2023. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering how you live purposefully. I think for me, a lot of it comes down to, my reading life, I would say. And I'm very purposeful in the way that I choose what I'm going to be reading next. I've been cataloging before I was ever 
working in a bookstore or affiliated with a bookstore. I like going to book events, but I, I've cataloged what I read since I was since I graduated high school. Um, when I graduated high school, I felt like I I read a lot as a child, and then I'd kind of taken a break from much outside reading. I'd done assigned reading at school, but not a lot of other things, and was worried that I hadn't read enough to be a serious student when I started college. And so I, I set a goal of, of reading 10 books that summer. Uh, and I had 10 weeks between the time I graduated Just high school. Just on your own? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Between, between the time I graduated high school and I but, and I moved down to Tulsa. And so I had 10 weeks and I was going to read 10 books. And the only rule was not two by the same author. It was like I could read 10 of somebody that I liked and just plow through 10. and then. But that wasn't going to be... I wasn't going to do what I wanted to do. And no books about sports. So... That was, it would be too easy to do that. So those two things. And so, so I started doing that, took track of them and then continued to keep track of them now for 24 years, whatever it is. Um, but what has changed recently is that, you know, you can take a look, I could take a look at all that and re- realize that I read a lot of books by men, a lot of books by white people and a really a lot of books by white men. And so I'm much more purposeful about not reading only books by one kind of person or, or from one standpoint. And um, I've always tried to read fiction and nonfiction to, in, to you know, split in some poetry to, to get a graphic novel in there, to read into, you know, genre fiction, speculative or, or mysteries or some, things like that. Um, but really the, the goal is to, is to continue to get that diversity of experience. Um, I think fiction does that so very, very well uh, where, I can have the experience of another person through fiction in a way that I don't think always comes through in nonfiction. Nonfiction is great for facts and and maybe even advice and 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 some other things, but it doesn't always give you that kind of interior experience. And fiction can do that, and especially when you read fiction by somebody that is not very much like you. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's awesome and very purposeful. So, yeah. Well, thank you for talking with me. This has been a lot of fun Thanks, and um, a treat to spend Good. time with you. Good. Thank so, you. Yeah. Okay, everybody. That's a wrap on this week's episode. I want to thank you for listening to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast. It means the world to me, and I'd love to connect with you. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Sharing Passion and Purpose and Twitter at Passion Sharing. Also, if you like this podcast, it would mean a lot to me for you to subscribe, rate, and review it. And as always, all my show notes will be available on my website, sharingpassionandpurpose.com.